Five long weeks, but the Detroit Lions finally managed to find themselves in the win column this past Sunday against their divisional rival, the Chicago Bears, thanks to a strong performance by quarterback Matthew Stafford and a reemergence of Detroit's number one weapon in Kelvin Johnson. So what's the key? to continued success for the Honolulu Blue and Silver. It's time for our weekly conversation with Mike Payton, editor of Side Lion Report, who gets us up to date on everything relating to Detroit Lions football. Mike, first of all, we want to welcome you uh, for your weekly uh, uh, chat with us about Detroit Lions football on the Two Man Advantage podcast. Hey, thanks for having me, Kevin. They finally won a game, Mike. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, but when we look at the game, obviously the turnovers uh, are still a problem. They had three, two on special teams, and it took them uh, an extra quarter, uh, almost an extra quarter, to get it done. But they're finally in the win call. Yeah, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't the prettiest of games, but uh, they were able to overcome the two muffed punts and uh, that just egregious Stafford interception and uh, got got the job done, got a win. Uh, so uh, what I know, um, and they made some mistakes, but what was the most impressive part of the win uh, for you? Uh, for me, I think it has to be Matthew Stafford. Uh, despite that interception, which, again, was just foolish, uh, he, this guy really responded well to to being benched last week, coming out and throwing for 400 yards and four touchdowns. I, I mean, that's you couldn't have hoped for a better rebound uh, game for for your quarterback than this. And and I think that uh, you know he he's he was definitely the the player of the week for and the Lions. When you look at the running game. Obviously, Amir Abdullah is still having bumbling problems, and we learned yesterday that uh, Zach Center is out for the season, and Drake Bell hasn't played since the game in uh, San Diego. So where, in your opinion, does that leave the Lions running game? Well, they still got uh, kind of a two-headed monster there in Riddick and Abdullah. Uh, if Abdullah can simply just control these fumbles, uh, you know, the kid, the kid can really play. Uh, he can make guys miss, and that's a, that's a big part of the game. But I think Theo Riddick at this point is your number one back. Uh, he, he definitely showed uh, what he could do in the past game, which we already knew, being a former wide receiver at Notre Dame. And, uh, you know, in the running game, he's still kind of learning a little bit and uh, starting to run between the tackles a lot better. And uh, it was nice to see the Lions finally get over 100 yards rushing uh, in a game for the first time this season. And when we look at the, their offensive performance, they found Kelvin Johnson now. <laughs> Uh, Kelvin Johnson had his first 100-yard game of the season. And finally, we've been talking about this for weeks, they finally seem to seem to find a rhythm on offense. Well, you could definitely tell on Sunday that they were playing with a, with an urgency and they were playing kind of a whole other ball game as far as offense goes. And they took a lot of deep shots, and you saw Lance Moore have uh, one of the better games of his uh, recent careers. 
career rather and uh calvin johnson obviously 166 yards on six receptions i mean that is that is quite a game for uh for the man they call megatron and and uh, of course you know the late game heroics from uh from johnson too to, to set up the game winning field goal I think the Lions' offense uh, finally kind of realized uh, what they needed to do, and they put Lombardi up in the the press box, which I thought was interesting. And they had Jim Bob Cooter helping out with the offensive calls a little bit more. And and what you saw was the Lions taking a lot more risks and uh, playing more to their strengths, which is that deep shot uh, game that uh, just let Calvin jump over everybody. And I was really impressed with Lance Moore. I'm not sure if he can continue to. Uh, show this type of performance for the rest of the season, but but he definitely showed up big on Sunday. Now uh, the bear, uh, during the last Bears offensive drive before overtime, uh, I found it a little bit odd that the Lions were playing uh, press coverage on that uh, last series before overtime. They were trying to give that game away at the end. It seemed like Mike. Yeah, you would have thought they would have gone. Uh, you know with three guys up front and had everybody else go deep just to prevent a long pass. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think the, the, the most damning thing of that last drive was that the Lions gave them two pass interference calls that set the Bears up for that uh, tying field goal. You just can't play defense like that. You really need, especially in a late game situation where you're trying to win your first game, you really need to clamp down and, and make sure you don't commit those dumb penalties. But it would have been nice to have seen the uh, Lions play more of a prevent defense and uh, kind of set all their guys back and 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 try to try to stop the Bears from taking those long shots. Now this is the second week in the wet row that the Lions have had special teams concerns. I think uh, T.J. Jones fumbled the punt. They uh, eventually put uh, uh, Golden Tate back there because. Uh, they had two uh, t- two turnovers on special special teams, so this is an issue that keeps rearing its ugly head. So, what did the Lions have to do to fix uh, their special team shooting? You know, it, it's really hard to get two muffed punts in one game. It's actually it's really hard to just get one. Uh, they really need to control that right away. And, uh, you know, I don't know who they put back there to to stop this type of thing from happening. Uh, I think T.J. Jones is definitely to blame on that uh, first first muffed punt. Uh, the second one, you know, Corey Fuller should have just known to just stay away from the ball. And, and uh, it was just a bad situation. And, uh, yeah, having Golden Tate back there provided you a little bit more security to catch the ball and uh, and not uh, drop it, obviously. And uh, Special teams has been an issue for many years, and, and it's going to take a lot to get that fixed. And they just cannot seem to nail down a return man that can safely uh, carry the ball or, or get you some a good field position off the punter or off the kick. It's definitely uh, one of their crosses to bear. Now, when we look at uh, what happened in this game, uh, uh, the defense obviously gave up some yardage, but uh, they did have, have uh, I think it was three stands uh, in the red zone on to hold the Bears to field goals. So what uh, positively can you take out of the defensive performance, and what do you think they still have to work on? Well, I guess the positive would be that they they uh, they bended, but they never broke. Broke. Uh, well, I mean, they they did allow two touchdowns, but uh, those touchdowns really were results of the uh, poor special teams play and the the turnovers that the Lions gave up. Uh, if the Lions offense and Lions special teams can keep the their opposing offense out of the out of their territory, then they, they'll have a better chance to, to at least just allow a field goal and, and uh, be able to run up the score a little bit more. I think if those two turnovers don't happen, I think the Lions uh, win in regulation and they win by a touchdown or two. Now, uh, when we uh, look also at the game, uh, it almost seems like the Lions are bitten by what it, what is a catch and what isn't a catch, and it came up again uh, right before halftime with Golden Tate. So when he was uh, going in the end zone and they thought Anderson had, uh, uh, had the interception, but they ruled it a touchdown. 
So what do you think the NFL has to do uh, to clarify what is a catch and what isn't? And what did you think of uh, the Golden Tate play itself? Well, this is a rule that's been around, uh, you know, since 2010, since Calvin Johnson and and the uh, infamous uh, no touchdown against the Bears, which uh, I still think is a touchdown to this day. I think most people do. Me too. And the fact that here we are in 2015 and we still don't know what a catch is, it's uh, it's – it's pretty embarrassing for the NFL. Uh, my understanding of Golden Tate's touchdown on Sunday was that he, uh, because he did not fall to the ground when fumbling, it, it, that constitutes a catch, apparently. Uh, to me, it was an interception, and I hate to say that because, you know, I, believe me, I cheered when the, when, the, when the refs got it wrong and ruled it in the Lions' favor, but that's definitely an interception. Uh, but who, who knows anymore, really? They're, they're going to change it again next week, I'm sure. And, uh, and then the week after that, this is going to be an ongoing thing for many years as to what is a catch in the NFL. And, uh, but, you know, this is the one time that it actually worked out in the Lions' favor, and you got to think that uh, maybe Dean Blandino was on the phone saying, hey, just give it to him after that whole uh, Seattle fiasco. Now, when we look at actually winning a game, obviously the organization can breathe a little bit on winning a game. Uh, And certainly, uh, if they're going to go anywhere this season, they need Stafford to play better. But what do you think the perception moving forward of the organization can be, and can they use this uh, win as a building block? Well, they're going to have to build off momentum. Right now, they find themselves, uh, even though they got a win on Sunday, they still find themselves as, as a team uh, trying to trying to beat uh, the past. And uh, There's never, ever been a team in the NFL that's gone 0-5 and made the playoffs, and the Lions believe that they can be that team. But they're going to really have to, to keep going on offense, and Stafford's going to have to continue to play like that all year long. Uh, if the offense can continue to move the ball like that, who knows what can happen. Uh, on the defensive side of the ball, you're going to have to get guys like Haloti Nata back, and, and uh, Jason Jones hopefully won't be out for long, and, and uh, James Ahedebo as well. You're going to have to get all these guys back and have your best uh, defensive foot forward for the rest of the year. Uh, nobody's, gonna, nobody's calling these guys world beaters, but they're definitely a team that can stop the run. And, and force the team to become one-dimensional. I think what you learned on Sunday is that the offense can move the ball, and uh, they can take those deep shots, and, and uh, maybe that early offense that you saw was not uh, is not going to be the one that you see for the rest of the year. Uh, Defensive-wise, uh, they're not world beaters, but they can stop the run and make a team one-dimensional, and that's going to be the biggest factor for this team's defense and uh, going forward. Uh, they're going to really have to stop uh, Adrian Peterson on Sunday if they hope to uh, beat the Vikings. But I, I fear for this team when it comes to uh, opponents like uh, the Packers. You know, I can't see this defense. De- uh, I can't see this defense stopping Aaron Rodgers at all. No, no way. And uh, when we talk about Matthew Stafford, obviously uh, that was his best looking game of the season, uh, despite the interception he threw. So. Can you uh, gleam anything positively uh, that he can build on moving forward? And do you think he can uh, sustain this performance? Well, I can tell you right now, uh, that was a statement game for Matthew Stafford. Uh, You get benched last week, you throw three interceptions uh, below 200 yards. It was just a really bad outing for him. Uh, and to come out and, and play a game like that, that really shows that Matthew Stafford cares about this team, cares about being benched. He doesn't want that to happen again. Uh, and he hears he hears the fans. I'm sure he does. He hears the uh, the analysts and uh, you know the the pontificators like myself who who say that uh, you know maybe the Lions should move on from him. And uh, I think Stafford took that this week, and uh, it showed that. He is the guy and can be the guy. And if he continues to play that way, then you know, the sky's the limit for the Lions. Is if, if you get two or three touchdowns a game from Matthew Stafford, then, then this team could go on a run. It's, it's very possible. And when we uh, look at uh, the coaching staff itself, 
Well, uh, do you think this coach, uh, this win, uh, keeps away the Vultures at least for one more week? And uh, with the success of what they saw on offense, do you think they'll loosen uh, the reins a little bit on this offense and let Stafford sort of play his own brand of uh, backyard football a little bit? <laughs> well, I, I, I think the seats are still hot for the uh, coaching staff and, and guys like Martin Mayhew and Tom Lewan. Uh This is just one win, obviously, and uh, things could go drastically wrong from here still. And uh, the, the seat's going to be hot probably until the end of the season, and, and it still might uh, not make a difference even if the Lions do make a magical run and go to the playoffs. Martin Mayhew might still find himself out of a job this uh, this summer uh, after all his prior transgressions. Uh, as far as uh, the offense taking the handcuffs off, I think moving Joe Lombardi up into the box really changed things for this offense and kind of showed that uh, that maybe Caldwell might be uh, calling some plays a little bit there and maybe they're trusting in Matthew Stafford to uh, run the offense and uh, if that's the case and the backyard uh, football is really going to help them because that, that going deep with Calvin I mean there's there's very few corners out there that can shut him down and when you double and triple up on him you've got Golden Tate and now uh, possibly Lance Moore to, to deal with and if Eric Ebron can come back soon then there's another weapon for Stafford and finally, Mike, what are you looking for to happen uh, uh, Sunday against Minnesota? And do you think the Lions have a shot at making it two in a row? Uh, I do. Uh, I, I think that the Lions are going to come out at home. Uh, they're going to have a much better crowd after this first win, I'm sure. And, uh, yeah, I, I'm going to go ahead and say that the Lions can continue to uh, move the ball offensively like this against uh, middle-of-the-road teams like Minnesota. And, and I think uh, they have a very good shot of getting a win there. Mike, we want to uh, thank you uh, for your time this week, and we look forward to hopefully talking about a second consecutive uh, win next week when we uh, meet with you to uh, discuss Detroit Lions football. Yes, sir. Thank you.